Hello everybody. Today we're going to talk about chords and their properties today. So first of all, we're going to review a little bit about circle. Okay, so radius. So in this case, here's a radius right here, OB. And that is, uh, what, what, what happened here? The distance from the center to any point on the circle. In this case, segment OB. Now you could say OC, you could say OA as well, but we're just going to go with OB for the notes right here. Okay, a chord. So a chord is a segment connecting any two points on a circle. So in this case, we're going to use segment DE. Okay, now I could say segment CA as well, because that's also a chord. Um, but we're going to use that for something else right now. Okay, so we've got radius. Plural, by the way, is radii, R-A-D-I-I. And we got chords. Now we got a diameter. Okay, so a diameter is the longest chord of a circle. Okay, it just so happens that it's a chord that passes through the center. Okay, the longest chord will always pass through the center. So we'll just say here it passes through the center. And in this case, that would be um, AC. That's the only uh, dia or the only uh, diameter that's drawn on the circle. Okay, tangent. A tangent is a line that touches a circle at exactly one point. Okay, and that would be line CQ in this picture. Okay, so it comes along here, it just kisses the circle at point C and then keeps right on going. Okay. A minor arc. All right. Uh, a minor arc would be an arc that has measure of less than 180 degrees. Okay, so uh, there's a couple of minor arcs on here. One would be arc AE. Okay, so that would be this right here. That's a minor arc. AB is a minor arc. BC is a minor arc. CD is a minor arc. DE is a minor arc. Okay, what's not a minor arc? Well, how about arc ABE? So this arc right here, that's not a minor arc because that's greater than 180 degrees. Okay, that's actually a major arc. Okay, so what's a major arc? A major arc is an arc of more than 
180 degrees. Okay, so another example of that would be, <coughs> excuse me, arc B, C, E. Okay, so that would be this arc. Right there, that's more than uh, half of a circle, so that's a major arc. Now notice this, a minor arc is always named with two letters. A major arc is always uh, named with three letters. And the reason for that is this. If I just said arc BE, I would first think of this arc over here, which is a minor arc. So for the major arcs, we add a second or another point, a third point in between the two endpoints. And that tells me the direction. So BCE, I could have said BDC, or I'm sorry, BDE if I wanted to. Okay, that'd be the same arc. The middle letter doesn't really matter as long as it goes the right direction. Now a semicircle, a semicircle is an arc of exactly 180 degrees. Okay, so there's two uh, semicircles on this particular, that are drawn on this particular um, uh, circle. There's this one right here, AEC, and then the other one would be a, B, C over here, okay? Those are also always named with three letters because you gotta know which direction to go. So am I talking about this semicircle or am I talking about this semicircle? Okay, so there's your parts of a circle. You should know all of those. Okay, a central angle is an angle that has its vertex at the center of the circle. So. Angle AOB is a central angle because O is the center of the circle, okay? And then we have an inscribed angle. That's an angle whose vertex is on the circle and, this is important, and both sides of the angle pass through the circle. So this side of the angle goes through and passes through Q. This one goes through and passes through S. So what? Uh, so angle QRS is a inscribed angle. Now, what does that eliminate? Okay, let's say um, that I had. There's a couple of situations here um, that I can do. So. Um, That right there is not an inscribed angle, okay? Because this side right here does not pass through the circle. So these over here are not inscribed angles, okay? Um, this is also not an inscribed angle. Uh, something looks like this. Obviously that's outside the circle, so that's not inscribed. This is also not an inscribed circle. Okay, because the vertex here is not on the circle. Okay, so you have three different not inscribed circles there. And then we've got this one is an inscribed circle. Okay, theorem, a central angle is always equal to its intercepted arc. So this is a really great theorem. This helps you out quite a bit. So uh, there's two ways to measure an arc, okay? There's arc measure and there's arc length. This is for arc measure. So you measure an arc in one, uh, there's a couple different ways. Um, in this class, we're gonna use degrees. Um, if you were in pre-calculus, you'd be using radians most of the time, okay? But we're just going to talk about degrees. So if this is a 40-degree angle in the center right here, the central angle, then this has to be a 40-degree arc. 
Okay. So those two are always the same. Very handy little theorem. Here's another theorem. The measure of an inscribed angle is always half the measure of its intercepted arc. So if I know that this intercepted arc right here is 128 degrees, that tells me since this is an inscribed angle, that must be half of that. So that would be 64 degrees right there. Okay, so any inscribed angle is always half of its intercepted arc. And by intercepted arc, I mean that this is one end of the arc right here where the, where the angle passes through. And here's the other end of the arc where the other side of the angle passes through the circle. Important theorem to know. It's also extremely very handy. Okay, theorem. If two chords in a circle are congruent, then their two central angles are congruent. Okay, so here we have a circle. It's got two chords, RS and TV. We are given that those are congruent to each other, so we'll go ahead and we'll just put that right there. Okay. And what we're going to prove is that angle ROS, so we're going to prove that uh, we'll call this angle 1 ROS and angle 2 TOV, those have to be congruent angles. Okay, so if the chord length is the same, the central angles have to be the same. All right, so you probably already figured out how to do this problem. Okay. The one thing that we definitely know about a circle is that the radius is the same distance no matter where it is. So we can go right to this and say, well, RO is congruent to SO, which is also congruent to TO, which is also congruent to VO. So all of these are the same length. Why is that? Um, <clears throat> that is the um, definition of a radius. Okay, the radius is the same everywhere on the circle. So we can say definition, uh, not or, of a radius. All those are radii. Okay, now I can look at this very simply and say, you know what, um, triangle ROS is congruent to triangle TOV by side, side, side. The three sides of one triangle are congruent to the three sides of the other triangle. And then that will tell me that... Um, Angle ROS is congruent to angle TOV, or I could have done angle 1 and angle 2, by CPCTC. And I'm done. And you know what? Since I didn't use these, I'm just going to go ahead and eliminate those right there. Okay, so I proved what I set out to prove, and I'm done with that proof. That was a nice, easy little proof. Uh, let's see, theorem. If two chords in a circle are congruent, then their intercepted arcs have to be congruent. Okay. Well, this goes pretty much with this theorem right here. Because remember, we showed that if this was equal to this, then that meant that this angle had to be equal to that angle right there. Okay. Well, let's see. An arc is always equal to its central angle. So that means that um, if angle ROS is congruent to angle TOV by the proof that we had right here, then we know that, um, that the measure of arc RS has to equal the measure of angle ROS, which is equal to the measure of angle TOV 
which is equal to the measure of arc TV. So this arc right here is equal to this angle. This angle is equal to this angle. This must be equal to that arc right there. So those two arcs have to be the same. So arc RS is congruent to arc TV. Okay, there we go. Uh, theorem, the perpendicular from the center of a circle to a chord is the bisector of the chord. Okay, so a perpendicular is a line or ray or chord, whatever, that is perpendicular to the core of the chord here. Okay, so could we prove that? Well, let's see, if I was going to prove this, I'd probably do something like the, uh, let's use blue. Probably do something like this. I'd probably make this and I'd probably make this. And let's see, I already know that those are equal. And then I know that, um, I know that this must equal this because they're both radii of the circle, right? And then uh, what else? This is an informal proof, by the way. Then I know that uh, this is equal to itself, this from uh, from the center to right here, equal to itself by the reflexive property. Now these two triangles are congruent by side, 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 which means that these two angles right here have to be equal, okay? And um, since they're equal um, and they add up to 180, they both have to be 90. Uh, let's see. The perpendicular from the center of the circle to the chord is the by. Oh, I'm sorry. We needed to prove that. Um, we need to prove that these two things are equal. Okay. So, uh, let's see then. Oh. Okay, so theoretically now we don't know that these two sides are equal to themselves yet, but we do know this. We know that this is an isosceles triangle right here. So that tells me that um, this angle is equal to that angle right there. Okay, and now I have, um, I have, Oh, and these are, these are both, okay, if that's 90 degrees, that means these are both 90 degrees right here. So I've got, um, oh, and then I can also say that these two angles have to be equal um, because these two, if these two are equal to these two, then those two have to be equal. Now I've got angle side angle. I got all kinds of stuff there. So that means that these two sides would be equal by CPCTC. So sorry, that was a little roundabout way of doing that, but um, you know, sometimes you gotta think these things through a little bit. Okay, two chords, uh, two congruent chords in a circle are equidistant from the center of the circle. Okay, so what that says is that if this chord here uh, let's call it uh, chord AB is equal to chord CD in length. Then the distance from the center to here, so this, oh, that's terrible. That distance has to equal that distance. Okay, so we could all, I would prove, if I was going to prove that, I would do something similar to what I did here. I'd form two triangles right here and two triangles right here, and I would go about proving that all those triangles were congruent, uh, but I'm not asking you to prove this one. might actually save that one for you to do in class. Okay, so got a nice little lesson here for you. Make sure you know all those theorems. You'll need to know those to be able to solve these. 
and uh, I will see you guys in class. Have a great day.